while back I got a comment suggesting that I should do a comprehensive textbook review for all the physics and math classes that I've had over the years. My goal for this video is to provide an exhaustive list of the textbooks that I found the most useful, as well as some textbooks that I think that you should avoid at all costs. When it comes to University Physics 1 and 2, it seems like there's the new editions of textbooks being published every few years. Does this mean that Newton's laws and Maxwell's equations keep changing? This physics has been well established since the 1800s. There's no reason to keep buying the newer and newer version of the book. So my recommendation is to buy the oldest one that you can, the cheapest one that you can, and study by using the exercises in the book as well as the mastering physics assignments that you're going to be assigned in your homework. Also, Khan Academy is really good. Now let's move on to big boy classical mechanics. When it comes to classical mechanics, the best book that I found is Taylor's book on classical mechanics. It's the big red book. You can't miss it. I would almost argue that this book has too much information. Have you ever wondered what the equations of motion would be trying to balance a block on a sphere? Well, get Taylor's book and you'll find out. Moving on to classical electrodynamics. When it comes to electrodynamics, this is one of the first big boy classes you'll be taking as an undergrad, aside from classical mechanics. And this is the class that will sort of make or break you as a physics major, so it can really help to have the right textbook to refer to. That book is and forever will be Griffith's Introduction to Electrodynamics. Griffiths introduces just the right amount of humor that keeps you from wanting to jump out of a moving car when you're studying physics. He has plenty of worked examples as well as exercises that mention how hard they are with little asterisks by the numbers. Not to mention every single problem in the Griffiths textbook is available online with fully worked solutions that you can see just in case you can't figure out how to solve it yourself. I'll leave a link in the description so that you can see said solutions. Unfortunately, it's because of what I just mentioned that a lot of professors are steering away from Griffiths and using other alternative electrodynamics textbooks because most of the professors assign homeworks out of the book and it isn't particularly helpful if the students are just looking online for the solutions. Griffiths section on special relativity uses his contravariant and covariant vector form. This will prove as a smoother transition if any of you plan on studying general relativity in the future. Moving on to thermodynamics and statistical physics. Now, I don't have a book that I highly recommend for this course yet, but there is the book that I used personally, and it's, it's okay. And it is Thermodynamics, Kinetic Theory, and Statistical Thermodynamics by Sears Salinger. Now, this book is okay. I think it has a decent amount of applied physics and theoretical physics in it, so it, it applies the theories that you are developing in the course. But overall... It's no Griffith's Electrodynamics. If you guys have any suggestions of StatMech books that you found more helpful, please list them in the comment section below. Now let's move on to everyone's favorite, quantum mechanics. You know, it's like he heard how unhelpful the StatMech book was and came back to save us all for quantum mechanics, and who I'm talking about is again Griffith's. I think I held that book upside down. Griffiths again just saves the day with this book with a hugely comprehensive book of quantum mechanics. This book has again worked examples and exercises that you can work through with yourself and again it has worked solutions available online. I'll post a link to those solutions in the description as well. Now don't get me wrong, Griffiths does a great job explaining quantum mechanics in this book, but in my opinion he doesn't go as in-depth in quantum as he did in electromagnetism. His section on variational methods is a little bit lacking in that it doesn't go into the Hartree or the Hartree-Fock equations, so when you go into variational methods and perturbation theory, other sources might be a little bit more beneficial to go to. Still, this is much better than the alternative book written by Gasorowitz. Gasorowitz. This book. I'm just kidding. The Gasorowitz book is fine, but it's just no Griffiths. It doesn't have the same level of examples provided as Griffiths does, and I don't think it does the best job explaining the basic principles of quantum. I, I think it's a little too abstract for a first presentation of quantum mechanics. Now it goes without saying that every physics major also has to have a good amount of math under their belt. So in my opinion, every physics student should at least have one type of mathematical methods of physics book. You really can't go wrong with any type of math methods of physics book as they're mostly supposed to be used as reference for the math that you already have established. If you don't know the math yet, it's always better to use the full-on math textbook for the course that you feel you need to work on. A few honorable mentions I'd like to note before stopping this video is any Shams Outlines book for math is always fantastic. I personally like the Differential Equations book and the Multivariable Calculus book. I thought they didn't do the best job doing Partial Differential Equations, which is why for Partial Differential Equations I recommend Elementary Partial Differential Equations by Richard Haberman. 
All of the books I've recommended will be listed in the description as well. The one caveat to learning math in a math textbook and then trying to apply it to physics, however, is which angles are which. Mathematicians and physicists disagree on which angle is the polar angle and which one is the azimuthal angle. So when it comes time to start familiarizing yourself with spherical and cylindrical coordinates, it's always better to go to the physics textbook as that convention is the most used. And if I haven't sold you on Griffiths yet, the spherical and cylindrical coordinate system is also in the back of the book for all Griffiths textbooks. But that is going to be it for this video. If you want me to elaborate more on why I chose one book over another, please let me know in the comment section and I'll get back to you. I hope you guys found this helpful.